More and more people want to live here, which makes this week's search a tough one. Yes, we're on the hunt for the perfect property for a city-based girl who longs for a bit more space and some peace and quiet. She's been looking for nine long months now, but she still hasn't found anything she likes. Jo lives in this city centre flat. She's a career girl who wants to use her hard-earned wage to buy a bigger and better home. I'm a solicitor and I work really hideous hours. And it's really necessary for me to be able to just almost come and go with relative ease. I bought the flat about seven years ago. I just finished my degree. But now I just really want to find somewhere new to live. Originally a Georgian spa town, Southampton has always been popular with urban dwellers seeking solace by the sea. It boomed in the 19th century with the coming of the docks and the railway, and it's never looked back. Today it's a bustling centre and Jo lives in the thick of it. The city can be quite claustrophobic. I was born and raised in a tiny, weeny little village in the Lake District. Um, I lived there for 18 years and I love it because of the space and I want to live somewhere where the rooms are big, it's nice and light and airy and I can see out and not feel hemmed in. Southampton was heavily bombed during the Second World War and many of its period properties were lost. The city was hastily rebuilt in the 1940s and since then it's been constantly redeveloped. But Joe's after a piece of history. I have to have a minimum of two bedrooms a sitting room and a separate dining room with lots of period features, open fireplaces, wooden floorboards and I just need some help. Here's a girl who knows what she wants. She's rejected dozens of properties over the last year. Let's see what we can do in just three days. Anything else that we should know specifically? I have to have a garden, really want a garden. Um, I don't want a little pokey garden either, it has to be a decent size. I want fireplaces. Have to be Talk to us about the budget because that's quite broad. Yeah, it's about 110 at the bottom and 150 ish, maybe a little bit more at the top end. Right, well, we've got some things lined up. Let's hope they fit the bill. Our first property is in Joe's dream location, but the drawback it's the furthest from the city centre. Leafy Lindhurst is in the heart of the New Forest. The postcode's prestigious, so the price tag is high, but it meets all of her other criteria. That's the new forest right there. So if you wanted a rural, peaceful time, this is going to be it. It's a character cottage. At just under £170,000, it's over budget, but we know the vendor wants a quick sale. Could it be the right address for a good price? It has two reception rooms, two bedrooms and a 38-foot garden. There are plenty of features, but it needs some refurbishment. The question here is, is the peaceful setting worth the travel to work. Okay. Come see what it buys you. So here we are, Joe. Cottagey feel to this one. No ceilings, quite like that. Very nice low feeling. ceilings, yeah. Like that. That's very nice. Wood burning stove. It's not attached. Ah, oh, can it, it be? should be? Yes. Uh, if the chimney's there, it can be attached. Do you like the sort of cottagey feel that we've got going here? Yeah, I do. It just sort of feel, it has a country feel to it. Are those original beams? They're not original. The beams aren't actually supporting anything, although they are real wood. Yeah. And they're adding to the sort of cottagey character of it. Now, Joe, coming upstairs, we've got bedroom to our right, yeah. bedroom to our left, and in here, a really lovely bathroom. Oh, it is, isn't it? But no, no bath. No bath. Yeah. There's no good reason for there being no bath in this bathroom because there's perfectly enough space to have one. Obviously, you couldn't have a shower and a bath. No. It would take a bit of a rejig of the basin and the loo, but it's absolutely, you know, not a difficult thing to do. You could have one of those roll top baths. Yeah. And the main bedroom's here at the front, together with the exposed chimney breast. That's lovely, isn't it? Isn't it? Is that it looks to me as if it's been built quite recently. But like the stove downstairs, this is not a functioning fireplace. Jo wants real fires, not decorative features. Reinstalling fireplaces can be pricey. It sounds obvious, but first check you've still got a chimney. Then find out if it still works. Finally, there's the installation of the fireplace itself. If in doubt, call in an expert. Fireplaces aside, Jo would want work done in the garden too. She's got to weigh things up. Do I really want to be in the country that much to have a smaller house? And I think that's what I'm going to go away and think about. 
So for Jo, size matters. We think we can find her more for her money closer to town. Our next property is only 10 minutes from the city centre. The suburb of Shirley is more urban, but we found a quiet street. This Victorian terrace has three bedrooms and is well within budget at 112,950. So Jo, how far is this area from your office? I guess it's probably about 10 or 15 minutes at rush hour, so that's really good. Now here, we've got a pretty good arrangement. Kitchen, dining room, sitting room. Yeah. Quite separate, but still open plan enough that you get a real sense of space. Yeah, it does look really big, doesn't it? The rooms in this property are huge, as well as this 27-foot reception, the master bedroom's generous and the gardens are whopping 75 foot. So there is lots of space, but is that enough? Now, currently, yeah. there's no fireplace other than... <laughs> <laughs> uh, there isn't a chimney breast here. No. Now, strangely enough, there is one above, because I know that you like fires. Either you could rebuild the chimney and basically insert it into the chimney breast that's still above. We think perhaps a cheaper option, and maybe a better option, would be a wood-burning stove here, yeah. and then the pipe goes up and joins the chimney breast above. If the existing flue is clear and the chimney stack intact, we estimate installing two fireplaces will cost around £3,000. Here you've got the kitchen. Right. And I don't know about you, but I think the idea of having your bathroom off your kitchen yeah, it's not ideal in terms, of, especially no. if you're entertaining. Mm. Yeah. The one thing I really hate is people in my kitchen yeah. when I've got people around. Yeah. A solution would be to convert one of the property's three bedrooms into an upstairs bathroom. But this can be expensive. It all depends on the complexity of the plumbing. I know that you were looking for a decent garden, Joe. Yeah. That was, that was one of the critical pieces of the jigsaw, wasn't it? It was, yeah. I just want somewhere nice to sit in the evenings after work. Is this nice? Yeah, nice size. I want somewhere that's nice and big. Key things to look at when analysing gardens is which way they face. And with my little compass here, <laughs> we're facing east. Sun rises in the east, sets in the west. So morning okay. sun. Yeah. Breakfast on the patio. Cool. For all day sun in your garden, the ideal position is south facing. It's a nice house, it's got some fairly, you know, big rooms, it's light, it's got the garden, which I'm looking for. This house has lots to offer. The only downside, it lacks fireplaces. It's priced well within budget, £112,950. Mm. I think if, if we stepped up a bit in price, then we could perhaps get the features that, you might, yeah. that you're looking for. Yeah. So we've got to set our sights higher on a property that ticks all the boxes and needs no work. Just three miles north of the city centre is the greener suburb of Bassett, Southampton's most sought-after area. Its desirability is reflected in the house prices. At just under £160,000, this Victorian terrace is at the top of Joe's budget. But again, we know the vendor wants a quick sale. This is a lovely long hall, Joe. And it's got these wonderful arches, two of them with these fantastic details on them, as well as the corner seat. In contrast to the previous property, this house is brimming with period features, with a fireplace in almost every room. This big upstairs bathroom was once a bedroom, and there's more useful space in the converted attic above. Downstairs, there's a good-sized sitting room and a separate formal dining room. That's amazing. This is rather sweet. We would have warmed your teapot on that <laughs> years ago. You've got your dado rail to prevent the, the chairs from going back and hitting the wall. So you can have very expensive wallpaper. Mm -hmm. So the house is looking promising, but what about the garden? It is smaller, but there's a secret here. Halfway point of the garden's up to about here. Right. That's a 22 foot long shed. And behind that, there's another 10 foot of hard standing. Okay. So you might think about some, taking the whole thing down. Down, yeah. Now, this is an extension, Joe, that the current owner's put on. He's done it very well. When we were here the other day, um, I noticed this. This is covered in moss and lichen, and it's actually damp to the touch. And here's the reason. Yeah. There's no guttering. So all the, the water that lands on that is pouring down here and landing on the bottom. Now, to fix something like this, a very, very small job, there'd be change out of 150 quid. Right, OK. 
So, Joe, what do you think? Wow. I like this. It's nice. It's great. It's it? a big space for a dining table. I like this place. That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> That's really yeah. cool. Yeah, I like the upstairs. It's got lots of really spacious bedrooms and the bathroom is really nice. And I love this kitchen. This house may be priced £10,000 over Joe's ideal budget, but is she yielding to temptation? It's one of the best ones that I've seen, certainly. And I do really like it. So. Right. OK, so moving on. <laughs> Three houses and one definite contender.